Welcome to this new episode. I'm sorry for the noise you can hear from um, outside um, because today is a very hot day in London and so I had to keep some windows open. I don't want to faint. <laughs> I want to remain pumped for this episode. So I need some fresh air. Sorry for for any inconvenience, police uh, uh, police car, people shouting, whatever. But at least you have uh, some taste of real life of, of, of what Brixton is on, on Brixton, etc. etc. So let's start with, um, I think it's an, um, an 8 CD uh, set by Incognito. It's called Always There, which is taking the name after the famous song from Ronnie Lowe's, which they covered, I think, in the 90s. And uh, this is an, an excellent band, uh, Paul Monik and uh, Incognito, that kept me happy during all my life. Uh, I say uh, since 1981, uh, their singles on Ensign Records, uh, then uh, the, nine, the album Inside Life in 1991 and uh, 1999 album No Time Like uh, the Future and uh, finally when I bought from Soul Brothers uh, a copy of Adventures in Black Sunshine I was very very happy and I still listen to all these releases on vinyl of course uh, there is an album also sorry from 2016 Search for a Better Days they as I said I anticipated they were initially signed for Ensign a record label which has been founded in 1976 by Nigel Grange and Chris Hill it was an independent um, label and uh, I think a subsidiary from the large major uh, phonograph, uh, phonogram records, which is, uh, was also um, a British entity, I believe, but please correct me if I am uh, wrong. In 1991, uh, the group signed with uh, Talking Load, uh, which is, uh, of course, a label founded by the legendary Jais Peterson and, and the great uh, historical patriarch of all DJs here in Britain, Norman Jay. And uh, um, the label's name, Talking Load, as we know, uh, was uh, based the Sunday afternoon that he the, the did with Patrick forger which uh, were well, uh, called the Dingwalls uh, afternoons but uh, also uh, talking loud and say nothing in honor of the great James Brown uh, I simply know by the patroness Dingwalls I think which was the name of the venue the venue in Camden so this is a commemorative ACD box set uh, which has been uh, issued I think last year and I have bought it recently so I wanted to review it it includes seven pre previously unreleased tracks with uh, guests such as Stevie Wonder Jocelyn Brown Brown, Shaka Khan. Paul Monik also produced uh, George Benson and the late Terry Callier, which are two legendary uh, features of soul, soul funk. That band, of course, uh, Paul Monik was linked uh, with another band, which is very important for me and uh, which I recommend you to listen, Light of the World. They were uh, at the same time linked with another British band known probably more than Light of the World, which are High Tension. Monik uh, also played with the band Freeze, uh, released on Beggar's Barquet, on the Beggar's Barquet label. And uh, it's uh, an amazing producer, which, uh, you know, is career spawn in, from, you know, in the 80s until today. He's an inspirator for a lot of other groups and musicians, and is also one of the main source of inspiration for making music. And recently I also finally bought a, a fantastic jazz spiritual album, Farrah Sanders, Floating Points and the London Symphony Orchestra. It's called Promises and it's a 2021 sorry, collaborative studio album by the British musician known as Floating Points. It's an amazing album. I would say that I've listened today again after a long time and uh, the, the, the impression, the, the calm, the serenity, the amount of peace that entered in my brain and in my soul was absolutely amazing after a few notes. And Wikipedia and all the sources say this is uh, noted, this is an album known for its dreamlike quality of the music. I would say, uh, it's. I would like to, to, to point out that this is an album connected with previous uh, Farrah Sanders album, which uh, would as develop an expertise to become so minimal that with a few notes uh, and it can express an entire in, in internal in, you know uh, interior word uh, and share it with us listeners because there are three or four chords that are going uh, on and on and on this album but the music that comes out and the orchestral arrangement and the variation that are made uh, with various instruments on top of this chords in the various movement that represent this unique composition that goes on and on with these chords it's absolutely amazing it seems like uh, to be hypnotized by someone with music 
uh, and without them without them being here so just the music so you can imagine the level of experience and, and the mastership in terms of arranging and composing that Mr. Sanders uh, floating like the artist known as floating points and of course the ability of the London Symphony Orchestra had in uh, creating this masterpiece which uh, because I think all the critics here gave <laughs> gave this album a very very, very uh, high mark floating points I, I said is an artist uh, is a British artist no and uh, some shepherd and uh, it's a British DJ a music producer known for what is called uh, um, some EDM some experimental EDM uh, mu um, various electronic or digital music is uh, also a DJ and uh, has produced numerous project in the, um, in various fields and this work with Farrell Sanders uh, is the first uh, project worked uh, in the studio by him uh, in uh, after some time the album seems um, to show that the creator have reached a point uh, where uh, in their career where they can as, as I said already before they master to express complex emotion with a minimum minimal amount minimum amount of notes um, the orchestra here reaches some heights heights that express uh, the power of uh, unconventional strange arrangements uh, made with a full orchestra and inspired of course by jazz and sometimes even by, by post jazz music and uh, it's a pure joy for me to listen to something like this uh, after all these years work Working with uh, in, as a music producer with the Vienna Ensemble and a Spitfire re Virtual Banks and listening a final orchestra and doing what most of the people now do with digital instrumentation on a computer, but it's not a critic to electronic music of digital uh, and virtual banks. It's simply that it is a it's, a, it's some fresh air after listening to all these um, soundtracks and movies. Good composer doing music with vir virtual banks. Again, Discogs uh, rates this as an electronic uh, British music producer. I would rather say this is a visionary creative with very few boundaries. Uh, th this is why, uh, like the way I would define the music of Mr. Shepard. And uh, I found also that this, this definition is much more in turn in line with what he says in the interview. And there is a good interview on the Red Bull Academy where you can learn about his training and his multiple experience and why he has such a um, strong interest for jazz. Uh, the power of uh, association with other pieces of music, albums and productions uh, made me remember the Plastic People, which is a club that hosted uh, incredible DJs, uh, including Floating Points and uh, also Giles Peterson. And I've been visiting the club many times when it was open, when it, when it used to exist years and years ago. I don't remember when it closed, but it's it's a pity now there is a commercial club playing horrible music in Curtain Road in, Curtain Road in Shoreditch uh, which I don't know if I would recommend <laughs> it's, it's there that I listened for the first time on its amazing sound system Love in Us All there is also uh, a very good um, uh, episode on YouTube uh, which is called uh, which I'll add in the description with floating points on plastic people record collecting and Iglo Records which is the label that he founded uh, it's uh, the red Bull Music uh, Academy is dated uh, 2014 so it's not really updated but it covers very well uh, the initial period is training and its influences so you will learn more about this artist and you understand how important is the training and uh, the type of music that a young artist can listen since his childhood in order to develop the proper style and to have multiple influences that then create can can help him to create a complex uh, works like he did um, in the past and now Switching to house music, uh, Julius Pop and Dave Waring, Odyssey EP. Uh, Pop is a Canadian house producer born in Montreal and uh, is a prolific producer for soulful post-disco house. It's an amazing discography, which I'm, I'm sure most, most house DJs know very well. For here. this 12 inch, there are three versions that are quite good. One is First Light, Escarsions Mix, then it's First Light, Excursions dub, and then I think uh, the other release inside B, the B4, is very nice. Very, this is very ambient, ambient pseudo jazz music with, of course, a house, a house music approach. And there are very some interesting beat patterns that does not follow the usual 4 4 rhythm that is quite you know conventional in house music. Sun is the track that I was mentioning before in in the B4 side I think I remember now and is another fine tune 
uh, again, it has a hypnotic rhythm and a hooky flute uh, playing a simple and an, an effective melody. I would really recommend a listen of this 12. And now I would like to talk about the Persuasive Jazz Volume 1, which is a very rare record. It's probably one of the many tax scam records. These were records made and issued like promos in order for label to pay less taxes. They were eligible for some tax discount in the 70s, if I remember well, but they, in reality, they were selling these to shop. Now it's unavailable, like many of its uh, similar, you know, parents is unavailable on Discogs and uh, it's very interesting for its content as in practice. Uh, all these are amazing records uh, created uh, in record session made by top musicians at the time with the idea that probably they would never got released. One illustrious uh, example in terms of label is Guinness Records. This label lists uh, in its catalog uh, some of the most sought after albums such as Formula One, Mad Cliff uh, and others. Uh, there is also, there are also New Band 1 and New Band 2, although I don't know if these are two tax cam records, but these are amazing records and they costed a lot. The originals, I mean. The production in relation for Madcliffe, for example, is very interesting because it can give you an, a listen of the demo versions of the songs that it will develop and produce fully for the more known, the more uh, famous group player, player, players or association. Uh, Persuasive Jazz, um, again, the album which we are considering today as one track only on the internet. I know the other tracks because a friend of mine lent it to me in the past for listening and uh, I have a digital copy but on the internet I just uh, added the link only to the only track I found which is Nicole which is a soft uh, just is a listening composition with an excellent flute and uh, an amazing Fender Rose performance uh, combined uh, in order to create an evocative melody slash harmony and uh, the listening experience here remind me Leon War uh, and Lonely Liston Smith Lonely Liston Smith I talked about him before Leon War is another great uh, composer musician to quote to great uh, the Edge of Daybreak, uh, Eyes of Love, uh, very interesting case, very interesting records. The musicians were actually inmates. They were residents of uh, a correctional center located in Richmond and uh, incarcerated for various crimes. This is an album that is here today in all its fantastic, fabulous reissues. Thank you also for the policy that this prison, this prison had allowed. There was a policy allowing its inmates uh, to access the musical instruments and they were allowed to go out in the studio in order to record it, I believe. Then when the release came out, they were were freed, I think, all, I think all, all of them. This is what the notes on this course says. The original copy, of course, is from 79, uh, and it's very hard to find. Also, I also don't know how it sounds because I never owned it. A friend of mine has it, but I still haven't listen to it. Actual price of the original copy may oscillate around uh, 800 to 1000 British pounds. Of course you can calculate the price in dollars or in euro if you are not in the UK. The original label for this release was Bohannon Records and I'm not sure if this is Hamilton's Bohannon Records uh, Hamilton Bohannon original rec owned the record label. There is another uh, there is another record which is uh, one of the two listed on Discogs which is Action Rise. Rise is the band and Action is a title of the of the song which is a boogie track from the early 80s and the price for that is uh, around 99 pounds and there is the last copy on Discogs but I assume that on eBay and other uh, uh, music portals, uh, websites, there may be other copies available. Uh, not talking about, of course, the various shops located around the world. Thank you very much. This is uh, uh, all for today. Uh, apologies for the, you know, mistakes uh, a lot and a lot of other inaccuracies that I might have uh, said and uh, various errors, but because this is the first attempt after long time doing episodes in Italian I wanted to try in English in order to reach a wider audience or to propose to a different audience uh, similar contents uh, to the one that I'm uh, already proposing to my Italian viewers um, I am very happy uh, to continue reviewing records I in any case I already uh, do this even without doing this um, YouTube episodes because every week I search for new music I read a lot of magazines both online and on paper and I always want to search for new stuff my joy is to share this with you 
and maybe to start a debate if you if you think otherwise if you have comments on what I've said if some of the definition that I and the labels that I use for the music that I describe are not correct or you don't um, you don't you don't you don't agree with them please feel free to comment to criticize I'm very open to discussions and to learn from you as probably I hope and I that you are eager to learn from me in case you don't know uh, the, the material the musical material that I am reviewing every week I have a very wide uh, an eclectic taste in music all below is just a part of my record collection I like house music I like jazz I like I like techno I what is called generically called electronic music but I like also uh, tech tech house disco balearic post disco disco not disco uh, hip hop soul uh, I like a lot of disco funk and funk and I have a lot of original 12 blinch from the 70s a lot of rare album I like northern soul uh, I like soul jazz I like jazz I also like hard rock I like sometimes metal and speed uh, drum and bass um, um, commercial commercial top 40 I, I am very I am an enthusiast person for music and you might have sometimes the impression that I'm confused because sometimes I review techno records sometimes I review pop records sometimes I review jazz and and, and, and spiritual jazz like today but that doesn't mean I'm, I'm confused I'm simply a, a music lover and I'm very open to many genres if you meet me in person you will understand this much better because I'm a chatterbox and I like to talk about many many different music genres whether you like country, bluegrass, where you like folk, where, where you have something to teach me in terms of music and you have discographies or music that you want to propose me, I will have these two ears pointed at what you want me to offer to listen and I will listen over and over it because I want to learn. I'm an avid watcher of all the internet channels that, that YouTube and Twitch channels that I found proposing find proposing music I listen to channels that propose me new trap made by kids I, I listen to all the lectures I listen to 50s R&Bs sometimes I talk with collectors that are 70 years old and then they 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 take me through their collection of swing 78 rpm they, they they illustrate me the rarity of some duke ellington records and the day after i listen to goldie and fotek uh, or i have the tech house session at the fabric in london where i listen to ricardo villa lobos so i don't have much limitation in music of course there is there are probably genres of music that i will never listen to because i uh, don't live one million years and i and i'm not bound to this planet unfortunately for more than 60 or 70 years I'm now 55 and I've done all my possible uh, you know search and I put a lot of effort in searching for music and uh, you know accumulating and collecting records in order to access to the best possible music in the world uh, as you say as you can see I'm very passionate and enthusiast for music so again if you want to interact with me and you want to comment please feel free. It might seem sometimes that I don't answer to comments or that I'm slow in doing the, that, but be, this is because I have a record label, I work as a lawyer, and I also do, do this episode uh, on YouTube, which are a little time consuming, and my week is only of seven days. But I try to be as much on point and in communication with you and in contact with you uh, as possible. Thank you very much for listening to this episode. If you reach, if you listen, if you watch this until the end, you are great. And if you listen to, to this only for a couple of minutes, you are great as well. Uh, here from an enthusiastic Italian. Have a good week. Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye. Alla prossima volta.